Square Enix executives, I have one simple question for you. Why are you the way that you are? So late last month, plenty of people got excited about the prospect of Parasite Eve returning. And people got this idea from a trademark shown on this website. This was trademarked by Square Enix. It's a title that reads right here, Symbio Genesis. This was trademarked on October 13th, 2022. And the reason people associated Symbio Genesis with Parasite Eve is because of the definition of the term. This is a Wiktionary entry that defines Symbio Genesis as follows. The merging of two organisms to form a single new organism. As New Salad Gematsu points out here, Square Enix filed a trademark for Symbio Genesis on October 13th in Japan, which was made public today. This article was published on October 23rd, and it is aptly pointed out by the article that Wiktionary's definition of the word symbiogenesis is, in fact, the basis of the story of Parasite Eve, which first began as a novel in 1995 before expanding into a video game series developed by Square Enix in 1998. And long has Parasite Eve remained dormant, and I haven't played the third birthday, but I know there's, like, disappointment surrounding that entry, so it's been far too long. A revival of Parasite Eve is long overdue, and people thought... This might be it, only for them to be disappointed to discover that Symbiogenesis is actually an NFT project. Here's New Salad Business Wire, who presented the press release for this. I'm not going to call it a game. That would be an insult to any other games out there that are actually video games. So it states right here that Square Enix announced Symbiogenesis, its first digital collectible art project designed from the ground up for Web3 fans. This project is very much all about play to earn and exploiting players so that they themselves establish the economy that Square Enix can reap the rewards from. The press release continues, Symbiogenesis is brand new entertainment content set in a self-contained world where a wide cast of characters symbiosis, all of which can be collected as digital art, an interactive story, and a dedicated community the art can be used for social media profile pictures is one of the things that they highlight here. They make a big deal about that aspect. Guess what? I can boot up any game right now, take a screenshot, crop out whatever I need to crop out, and use it as a profile picture. This is nothing what they're presenting here. This is nothing new, nothing revolutionary. And if somebody uses one of their NFTs as a profile picture, I can just download that as a JPEG or whatever image file format and use it as a profile picture myself <laughs> this is so fucking stupid and as a character in a story that takes place in an alternate world where the player can untangle a mystery by completing missions that revolve around questions of the monopolization and distribution of resources questions of the monopolization and distribution of resources the irony of that topic coming from a corporation like Square Enix who can't even help acting in a way that results in them being compared to Shinra by the fan base with each strategic move players make more of the story unfolds sales of Symbiogenesis's NFT collectible art in a free browser service are slated to launch in spring of 2023 as you can imagine reactions across the internet have been less than stellar, especially because so many people were led to believe that this may very well be Parasite Eve. And not only is it not Parasite Eve, which on its own is disappointing, it's the worst thing they could have possibly announced this project to be an NFT play to earn piece of crap. You can see right here, Symbiogenesis already has an official Twitter page and they announced right here, NFT collectible art project, Symbiogenesis, untangle the story, spring of 2023. Boom, ratio. First of all, not a whole lot of engagement surrounding this tweet or this whole concept in general, but what engagement there is, you can see more people have preferred to quote tweet and express their grievances. And scrolling through the comment section, here you can see right here Parasite E fans feeling abandoned while Square Enix embraces NFTs and this is kind of the general feedback NFTs more like no effing thanks excellent use of the Aerith going full wrestler mode screenshot here people are posting this edit of Barrett from Final Fantasy 7 ranting about how Shinra is destroying the world in this case Square Enix the planet's dying cloud and these crypto fuckers are trying to get us to burn down half the rainforest for a damn JPEG you get the idea so on and so forth no effing thanks Thanks is being expressed uh, quite adamantly and uh, everyone disliked that is prominently on display among many other memes that basically say this ain't it chief this ain't it's Square Enix. same goes for any new salads reporting on this video games chronicle tweeted about this and that's getting ratioed and people are expressing their grievances it's not all good man 
Indeed, it's not a project that's going to die within a year, lol. I'd be very curious to see how long this project lasts, especially given that this project comes in just in time for the crypto crash and the NFT sort of exodus or lack of interest that we have been seeing as of late. There's just been a complete decline in the whole crypto and NFT market. Plenty of crypto projects and NFT projects have gone bust, and there's just not a whole lot happening in this sector. So yeah, good luck, Square Enix trying to make this project successful, especially now that you've alienated your community through a project that is least desirable. Now, Square Enix did hint that they wanted to make a story-focused NFT game back in June of 2022 during a 2022 shareholders meeting report. Now, scary quote from the shareholders meeting was, it's still too early to consider making Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy blockchain games. Note that what he said wasn't, we're never gonna make Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy blockchain games. He said, it's still too early for that, which implies that one day, it'll happen. And already they are dabbling with NFTs in these franchises. With Final Fantasy, for example, there are these figurines that came out for essentially the classic models of the Final Fantasy VII characters, essentially the original artwork kind of given life 3D life through figurines. This looks really freaking cool, except that NFTs are involved. As a headline here reads, Square Enix's Final Fantasy VII NFT toys are infuriating. Final Fantasy VII collectibles in the Bring Arts line of posable action figures look pretty damn cool. I genuinely, you know, would potentially consider buying this if it wasn't for the fact that they all come with a digital certificate of authenticity that is just, in fact, an NFT. Gizmodo then further details how Square Enix is trying to shoehorn NFTs into action figures where this kind of scheme doesn't belong. Long. The system requires collectors to sign up for a wallet with the engine blockchain network, and there's even a digital plus version of each figure you can get that for an increased cost lets you redeem an NFT that gives you access to a 3D replica of the figure viewable in the real world through an augmented reality site. You can't just buy the figures themselves. Both versions come with the NFT. And if you buy the figure and simply choose not to register for a wallet, the token not only still exists for that figure in the first place, you're also paying way more for nothing at all. So yeah, we've already been seeing early signs that Square Enix is going to double, triple down on NFTs. And with Symbiogenesis, I mean, that really marks Square Enix's major push towards Web3, towards Metaverse, towards uh, an NFT economic ecosystem for a video game that's basically trying to be a job rather than a form of escapism that tries to integrate real-life economic elements that makes playing the so-called game a genuine risk reward factor as far as your financial standing goes. The headlines surrounding this announcement are not pretty. Here's IGN's, which reads, Square Enix's Symbiogenesis is an NFT collectible art experience, not a Parasite Eve revival. It looks like Parasite Eve isn't returning after all. Here's Engadget, who said, Symbiogenesis is some NFT garbage from Square Enix, not a Parasite Eve revival. The publisher will start selling NFTs for the project next spring. Here we have Destructoid, who updated their article reporting on Symbiogenesis with awful updates. Symbiogenesis by Square Enix is actually just some NFT junk. New salads are just not holding back with how displeased they are by the direction that Square Enix is headed in. Symbiogenesis isn't the return of Parasite Eve, it's just Square Enix making NFTs. Oh, for fuck's sakes, says Push Square. Next up, we got Digital Trends, whose headline reads, Square Enix's Symbiogenesis NFT project disappoints Parasite Eve fans. Polygon said, Square Enix's Symbiogenesis isn't the Parasite Eve revival anyone was hoping for. Mysterious trademark has the worst possible ending. I couldn't agree more. Last but not least, the gamer said, no, Symbiogenesis isn't Parasite Eve returning. It's Square Enix NFTs. Another Square Enix psych out. There's been plenty of backlash surrounding NFTs, but Square Enix remains stubborn about the direction that they want to lead the company towards. This was something that the president of Square Enix expressed to celebrate the new year when he published this letter on January 1st, 2022. He talked about how another term that gained quick currency in 2021 was NFT or non-fungible token. I see 2021 not only as uh, Metaverse year one, but also as NFTs year one, given that it was a year in which NFTs were met with a great deal of enthusiasm, momentary gimmicky hype that has very quickly died down as shown by the recent crypto crash and the fact that NFT interest has waned dramatically since its peak. It was very much a temporary hype train that people very quickly realized, oh, there's actually not a whole lot of value here. This doesn't really offer much other than a speculative stock market that is more volatile than 
the stock markets that we know from Wall Street and the like. It's people investing and pulling their money together on something that literally just doesn't exist. And uh, it's this pyramid scheme, Ponzi scheme, whatever you want to call it, that uh, continues to perpetuate scams and theft and crime, money laundering, all kinds of shady activity. It brings no benefit other than the few lucky ones at the top of the pyramid who will be able to exploit these schemes to get rich themselves to leech off of people who are susceptible to these kinds of schemes. And along the way, the environment is being harmed more than it already is. But Square Enix's president believes that blockchain games are the way of the future. Lastly, as far as blockchain games go, be they single player or online games, games have traditionally involved a unidirectional flow whereby creators such as ourselves provide a game to the consumers that play them. By contrast, blockchain games are built upon the premise of a token economy and therefore hold the potential to enable self-sustaining game growth. That's what Square Enix and corporations leaning into NFTs and play to earn want self-sustaining game growth. They want as little effort for as much of the gain. They want to create an environment where they set the groundwork so that people make the money for them instead of them having to put the effort into making something that people want to buy. Instead, they'll rely on this self-sustaining economy of people out pyramid scheming or out Ponzi scheming each other. And meanwhile, Square Enix takes a cut of whatever exchanges happen in this uh, micro economy. Now, Square Enix tries to frame in this letter the play to earn model as something that people are so excited about. But aside from the niche group of people who partake in this stuff and want to take advantage of this stuff for essentially a get rich quick scheme that involves exploding others, nobody's really excited about the prospect of this kind of bullshit bleeding into our video games, transforming them from a form of escapism that we can just get lost into that has no tangible effect on our real life elements, on our real life financial standing into something that is essentially this other job that you have to take seriously. And Square Enix's president treating the concept of play to have fun as if it were an alternative form of gaming rather than what gaming should be all about really highlights where his mindset is at with gaming, the interactive medium that we have come to love because of the fun and immersion and storytelling and artistry that it can provide. He sees it as a means to build an interactive money-milking machine, an environment where only very few will get really rich and will luck out in this environment, whereas others will be struggling. There will very much be a class divide in this whole Web3 concept and this whole play to earn concept, much like there is in the real world. That's what happens when you try to replicate real world elements into video games. The bad stuff that happens in the real world will seep into the games as well. The letter states that traditional gaming has offered no explicit incentive to this latter group of people who were motivated strictly by such inconsistent personal feelings as goodwill and volunteer spirit. He scoffs at those ideas that generate some of the most passionate projects. People make some of the coolest stuff just because they want to, not because they want to make all the money in the world from it. Money is more of a necessity, but the passion behind the project is what fuels its creativity, its artistry, and the incredible results. Whereas people who just want to make money can't think outside the box of just, oh my God, what is the trend? What is the thing that has the most potential to make money? And so the product or whatever they're making gets creatively stifled because there isn't passion driven behind that. It's just them trying to scheme a way to squeeze the most out of players instead of just making something really good that comes from the heart that resonates with people and therefore people will want to pay and spend money on something that they feel is worthwhile because they can feel that this is unique and passionately developed. All of that's lost once you get into token economies that will provide users with explicit incentives, thereby resulting not only in greater consistency and motivation, but also creating a tangible upside to their creative efforts. I'm not saying that artists shouldn't be paid for their work, but this whole idea of a self-sustaining economy where the whole goal is to try to make money to play to earn, they're going to try to exploit the system and find a way to make the most amount of money in the easiest way possible, which again is what people do in the real world. I've seen plenty of people who are purely driven by passion who have made projects for free that then led to them finding really cool jobs or finding work with entities who saw just how creatively talented these people are. And so there are definitely avenues for people to make things out of passion and then that drive them to further success without needing to create these token economies, these play to earn environments. Because once it becomes about playing to earn rather than playing for fun or just out of sheer passion, the goal of earning will corrupt the entire experience. 
because then the incentive will be how do I make the most money rather than how do I make the best thing that people would want to pay for or move them in such a way that the legacy you leave behind creatively is one that will be eternalized in history as a positive force. There's not much else to say other than that I hope that Symbiogenesis continues to face swift backlash and come launch I hope there's so little engagement and interest surrounding this project that this will ultimately die off unceremoniously and that Screenix will learn the lesson that players, gamers, don't want this crap. They just want to escape into imaginative, passionately created worlds, characters, gameplay, music, art, with none of that compromised or corrupted by scummy monetization tactics, self-sustained economies that corporations can exploit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is one man's take on Symbiogenesis. Screw this project is the bottom line. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Square Enix's announcement of Symbiogenesis and the description they've provided surrounding this project. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.